protect them from harm and danger from those who would uh, seek to injure them or steal from them or attack them. Lord, protect them from the diseases. Lord, put a hedge of protection around them. Provide for them. Enable them and empower them to reach many and to save many. Lord, I pray that the doors will somehow miraculously open up so that many of the relief efforts that are even now preparing can get there, get there swiftly, and bring the much-needed supplies successfully. Lord, I also want to ask you for the United States of America. That as we look at what's happened in Haiti, that it would serve as a reminder, a wake-up call of sorts. Lord, that perhaps this would shake us up and even wake us up from our spiritual slumber and remind us of what you said. That in the last days there would be earthquakes and that they would take place in various places and that this would be a sign that your soon coming is very close. Also, Lord, I pray that this would serve as a reminder for us of our need for you, our dependence upon you. This could happen to us here on these beautiful islands. Lord, I pray that you would ready us and steady us, that we might be ready for whatever it is that might come our way. Will you place within our hearts the urgency of the day in which we live, knowing that our redemption draweth nigh? In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, I have two websites on the screen, the first of which is the website for Samaritan's Purse. I also have the website for Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa. It's simply samaritanspurse.org and calvarychapelcostamesa.com. Uh, the first page, the front page, will have uh, places there where you can go online uh, and uh, donate uh, as the Lord leads. And those monies, uh, you can be rest assured, uh, will reach uh, the people of Haiti uh, during this time. Well, this sort of dovetails into our prophecy update in a way because... Uh, this seems to be, to me, a, another sign. <laughs> another sign. I mean, you have to understand the whole government, how, no matter how corrupt it was in Haiti, has completely collapsed. I mean, it, it really only takes sometimes one natural disaster and you can watch a whole nation fall and crumble and any structure, any semblance of normalcy is evaporated seemingly with a stroke of a pen. We usually look at Israel, we see it as the prophetic clock as far as God's prophetic timing is concerned. And last week we began a series whereby we're looking at a number of prophecies that we can keep our eyes on in the new year, uh, sort of a watch list, if you will. And we started off with that which we started off the new year with, and that was that attempted terrorist attack on Christmas Day. I think one of the prophecies that we need to keep our eyes on is America becoming more increasingly vulnerable to Islamic terrorist attacks. There's a couple reasons for this. We looked at this more in depth last week. But I think the 
one reason that this is a prophecy to watch in the weeks and months ahead is because of our political correctness. See, we now give these Muslim terrorists the rights afforded a U.S. citizen as a criminal defendant. They're innocent till proven guilty. The problem with this is that these Muslim terrorists are not criminal defendants. They are enemy combatants who have waged war against America. So that's what jihad is. Jihad is a holy war. So there's no political correctness in jihad. Unfortunately, and that's our second problem, is that under the banner of our political correctness, we say peace and security while they're saying war and destruction. Uh, again, that's what jihad is, and that's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, when they're saying peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as a woman travailing in labor. So, every time there's an attempted terrorist attack by a Muslim, now I know that some of you are saying, well, wait a minute, uh, you know, uh, we, they're Muslim extremists. Well, can I answer the, well, there's a distinction between Muslims and Muslim extremists this way? It's been said that not all Muslims are terrorists. Okay, that's fair. But my problem is that all terrorists are Muslims. And that's our problem. We don't understand Islam. Islam has waged a holy war. You know, I grieve in my heart when I hear the experts, the pundits, I don't even know what pundit means, but that's what they call themselves. <laughs> I think it means something else, but I won't speak that word from the pulpit. But uh, <laughs> it's not very pastoral. The problem is, is that they say, well, this is not about religion. Or this is not about race. Excuse me. What planet are you living on? What is it that you don't understand about that which they have planned for us as the great Satan? Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> you here in the United States of America are considered to be living in what Islam calls the great Satan. Israel is the little saint. Uh, I'm not really the sharpest knife in the drawer, but whenever you bring Satan into the equation, I think you're bringing religion into it, aren't you? And here's the other problem. You cannot separate religion from race when it comes to Islam. It is woven into the fabric of the culture. It is woven into the fabric of the race. It is woven into the fabric of the ideology and the belief system that is so ingrained within these people that it is inseparable and you cannot make the distinction. In other words, if the Muslims were not, uh, if, if they were not that race, they wouldn't be Muslims. Can I say it that way? I mean, it's like this. In America, we say, well, you know, this was a great Christian nation at one time, and, you know, you interview the average person on the street, and what are they going to say? Oh, yeah, I believe in God. I mean, you know what the percentage is of professing Christians in the United States of America? I realize it's declining, but it's, it's a pretty high number. And so we were known as, and really in some respects, are still known as a Christian nation. In other words... American is synonymous with Christian, see? So there you have the marriage between the race and the religion, if you will. But in our political correctness, 
we will never acknowledge either.